Dear brothers and sisters, it's such a delight to interact with you today. Thank you ever so much for joining us. This is Healing Streams, the place where God's word transforms lives and destinies. I pray that God will touch every area of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's topic, divine diversion. Divine diversion. This message was inspired by a recent experience I had. I was on my way to the airport and I was running late. There was very heavy traffic on the roads within the airport. As the traffic worsened, the time on Google Maps was lengthening by the minute. Suddenly, about three cars ahead, a policeman blocked the lane with his car. I wondered what was going on. The Uber driver said it means there's been a diversion because of the buildup of traffic on the road to the departure terminal. My first thought, why am I being blocked? I'm late already despite all my best efforts, journey planning, time management. I was about to start binding and loosing, yes, binding the spirits of delay and obstruction. Everything trying to hinder me from getting on my long haul flight back to Nigeria. Before I could pray though, a strange thought occurred to me. What if this has happened for my good? I knew the thought came from the Holy Spirit because logically I couldn't figure out how this could work out well. Suddenly the driver said he would drop me off at the arrival terminal. Light bulb moment. I suddenly figured out how God was trying to help me or God was helping me. If I stayed on the same track, I would definitely have missed my flight. So what happened? We were diverted to the arrivals terminal. We arrived five minutes later. I picked up a trolley, placed my luggage on it and took the elevator to the departure terminal. Within 10 minutes, I had my boarding card in hand. What a relief. My thoughts at that moment, God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Big lesson, not every blockage is bad. This experience illustrates how God diverts us for our own good, even when we don't appreciate it. Divine diversion, divine orchestration, Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Very often, we imagine that we have it all figured out. God changes the plan and we get all upset because we can't see as far as he can. God is Omega and Alpha. He knows the end from the start. Today's topic, divine diversion. The word divine refers to God. Let's look to the dictionary for the meaning of diversion. It has several meanings depending on the context. It could be a change of direction, the action of turning something away from its course. It could be reallocation, the act of reallocating something, such as funds or resources. Diversion could mean taking an alternative route, maybe in traffic, just like it happened with me. Diversion could be a distraction, an activity that diverts the mind from tedious or serious concerns. A diversion can also be a tactical maneuver, something that is intended to distract attention from something more important, often used in military contexts. Looking at the definition, a diversion can be positive or negative for the individuals concerned. Diversion can come from several sources, divine diversion, that's diversion from God, satanic diversion, diversion from Satan and his agents, or self-diversion when an individual decides to change direction. God can use diversion or detours to get his people where he wants them to be or to do what he wants them to do. God can use diversions to help people avoid danger or disaster. God can use delays and circuitous journeys when the timing is not yet right. Matthew 2, 13 to 15. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophets, out of Egypt, I have called my son. 
So through a dream, God diverted Joseph to Egypt to save the life of baby Jesus. Interestingly, this divine diversion was a fulfillment of prophecy. Matthew 2, 19 to 23. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and the mother and went to the land of Israel. And when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. And so was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Again, through a dream, God diverted Joseph to Nazareth to save the life of baby Jesus. Again, this diversion, this divine diversion was a fulfillment of prophecy. Guidance, protection, and fulfillment of prophecy through divine diversions. Have you been perplexed, confused about some events in your life? Are you starting to blame God for some delays or diversions? Lord, why didn't it happen this time? Lord, why didn't it happen in this way? You can ask God for insider information. He may choose to reveal part or all of the workings that go on behind the scene. Delay or diversion may be the workings of God in your life. Sometimes God directs our paths in ways we do not understand, but these diversions are part of his divine plan for our lives. Despite the diversions, you will inherit the promises. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? God can divert you, relocate you, reconfigure your path. In each case, he's working for your good. May we recognize the promptings of the Holy Spirit during our life's journeys. Acts 16 verse 6 to 10, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region and having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by and went to Troas. And during the night, Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia, standing and begging, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul saw the vision, he got ready and they left for Macedonia with his company, concluding that God had called them to preach the gospel there. Divine diversion. The Lord's glory was at stake. Paul's mission in Macedonia was highly fruitful as a result of the divine diversion. Many souls were saved. Churches were founded in Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea. Diversions can come from God, from Satan or self. Satan is also seeking to divert our lives and destinies. The definition of diversion that is more suited to Satan's tactics is the tactical maneuver, something intended to distract attention from something more important. In Genesis 39, Potiphar's wife attempted to divert Joseph's destiny through deceit and false accusations. She tried to seduce him repeatedly, but Joseph refused, citing loyalty to Potiphar and his commitment to God. But one day, one day they were alone and she grabbed Joseph's cloak as he tried to escape. Then she said, he tried to assault me and her husband believed her. So Potiphar had Joseph imprisoned. Despite this setback, Joseph remained faithful to God and eventually he became a prime minister in Egypt a foreign land. Satan tried to divert and truncate Joseph's destiny, but he overcame all obstacles. Joseph's life was full of divine diversions, put in a pit, sold into slavery by his brothers, falsely accused, imprisoned. Joseph's path was redirected, was diverted many times, yet each diversion led him closer to God's ultimate plan for him to save many lives during a famine. Satan 
cannot successfully divert our lives and destinies. Romans 8 verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Diversions can also come from the individual. God may be trying to keep a person on course. He may be trying to get our attention. But God has given us free will. It's a gift that he's given us. I pray that I will use that choice in the right way. And I pray that you will also. God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach to the people of the city, to turn them away from their sins and back to God, to prevent destruction. But Jonah had other plans for himself. Jonah 1 verse 3. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah chose his own path. He boarded a ship heading away from God's will. And of course, he encountered extreme difficulty. But God was about to divert Jonah back to his will, divine diversion. God sent a storm and a great fish to redirect Jonah back to this mission, this very critical mission that would save the people of Nineveh. Romans 8 verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If we would only allow God, if you would only allow God, all things will work together for your good. Your good works, your mistakes, the setbacks, the detours, the diversions will all work together for your good. God is orchestrating your life's journey. There's a song I love by Donald Lawrence. It goes like this. O oh, thou who knowest my beginning, thou who created the plan, who orchestrated my life's journey. God, you are my God. Yes, God has the blueprints. God has the plan. Your life is not a series of random events. You are not at the mercy of setbacks and stagnation. Ephesians 1 verse 11. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. That guarantee that all things will work together for your good, that will work together for our good, it comes from God the Father, for the chosen. Yes, those that are chosen by God through his Son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing, in Christ, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will. God has made a pathway to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to the earth. He died and he rose again. He resurrected so that you can live a successful life here on earth and have life everlasting, eternal life after you leave the earth. You can change the course of your life and destiny right now by accepting God's gift, Jesus Christ. Please accept Jesus Christ today by saying this prayer with me. And if you're a Christian who has strayed away from God, you can say this prayer also. The prayer is visible on the screen. Please let us pray. Almighty God, I confess that I've done things my own way. Going forward, I choose to do things your way. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my savior and as my Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my life. If you said that prayer, you have joined or rejoined the family of God, or you have reaffirmed that you belong to God, congratulations if you just joined God's family. To continue your Christian journey, please join a Bible believing church. In addition, please send a message to the number on your screen, 0708-225-6051, stating, I gave my life to Christ. If you're outside Nigeria, please add the code, plus 234 708-225-6051. We'd like to help you navigate the next steps. D. 
divine diversion. I'd like us to take some prayer points together. There are quite a number, so please follow on the screen. If the pace is too fast, please feel free to come back later to pray with further depth. Prayer point number one. Almighty God, thank you for my life journeys. Thank you for everything I've been through, the blessings and the challenges. Please forgive me for not appreciating the path you have taken me through. Thank you for protecting me through diversions and detours. Thank you for your constant guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer point number two, Romans 8 verse 28, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Let us pray. Oh, powerful God, my life is in your hands. Orchestrate my life's journey. Let past occurrences and mistakes work together for my good. Where I have gone wrong, redirect me. Weave every mistake into your master plan for my life. Help me to recover all lost opportunities. Give me new opportunities to shine. Give me new opportunities to prosper. Give me new opportunities to serve you. Give me the power, wisdom, and the grace to fully utilize existing and new opportunities in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number three, almighty God, abort all the plans of the enemy for my life. Divert any plans of the enemy against me. Deliver me from demonic wanderings. Deliver me from ungodly journeys. Let all my efforts yield a beautiful harvest. Prayer point number four, Oh, Lord God, please direct my steps. Lead me away from paths that lead to destruction. Lead me away from paths that lead to destruction. Help me to follow your plan for my life. Grant me revelation, insight, wisdom, discernment that will move me to the next level and beyond. Grant me peace and joy as I navigate life's journeys in Jesus' name, amen. Prayer point number five, omnipotent God, orchestrator of my life's journey. Deliver me from missteps. Deliver me from stagnation. Deliver me from financial downturn and setback. Let every setback be transformed into a setup for greatness. Let my skills and competencies distinguish me. Divinely divert and reallocate resources and funds in my favor in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number six. Oh God, place me in the positions that you have ordained for me. Implement your plan for my life. Let my life bring you glory. Activate my destiny on a new level. Accelerate and fast track my destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer point number seven, omniscient, all-knowing God, please direct my paths. Let me be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Divert destiny promoters my way. Those who will broadcast my business, those who will speak of my accomplishments before the king, ordain great victories for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Prayer point number eight are your personal prayer requests. I'd like to agree with you in prayer. Matthew 18, 19 tells us that if any two persons shall agree in the name of Jesus, it shall be done by our Father. Please lift up your voices to Almighty God, the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the ever-present God. Ask God to visit you in a special way. Ask him to visit you in specific areas of your life. Ask him to redirect, to divert you into the path of righteousness. Lift up your requests 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious promises. We're thankful that when we pray, you answer us. I agree with all those listening to me right now that their prayers will become testimonies and those testimonies begin right now in the name of Jesus. Thanks for praying along with me. And as we pray further, please feel free to type amen in the chat box. May Almighty God cause everything to align in your favor. Mountains are leveled. Crooked paths are made straight. Rivers in the desert for your sake. May Jehovah El Shaddai grant you blessings of the heaven above, blessings of the deep, uncommon favor and unusual manifestations of his glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Please join me next Saturday at 8 a.m. West African time for the next edition of Healing Streams. Please like this video and share it. Bless someone today. You might even win a soul. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel you're watching. Kindly invite your friends and family to subscribe also. Click the bell icon so you'll be notified when Healing Streams is on air. Thanks to our Facebook family for joining us week after week. You can also follow Healing Streams with Femi Peter on Instagram. At Healing Streams with Femi Peter, you can view all the videos in one place. You can view back episodes without scrolling through months and months of material. It's been such a joy bringing Healing Streams to you today. And may the healing streams of peace, joy, mercy and love flow towards you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom.